Hey guys, it's Earl and Brian here today. We're gonna go over our CAN communication module. You've probably seen this box before in some of the other videos for E46s, G35s, and 350Zs. We're starting to offer this unit as a standalone item on the website, and we're gonna expand applications to Jeeps, BRZs, FRSs, a number of other vehicles, and we'll also be using it to control CAN shifted, automatic transmissions such as a six and eight speed GM transmissions found behind LS3s. So we're just gonna give you guys a quick overview of the kit, what it includes. It includes a GM style temperature sensor which our box uses to communicate with your gauge cluster. That's gonna make your coolant temperature gauge work and also provide fans on certain applications. So what we're gonna do here is just go over how to build this connector and how to crimp a couple terminals that way when you receive the kit you know exactly what you got going on so we've got a w style crimper here which is available on the website so as you can see one side is kind of a u shape and the other side has sort of a point in the center here so what you're going to want to do is the flat portion of this terminal here on the back side is going to go toward the u shape and then this wing portion above is going to go toward the side that has the point in the center. That point is going to curl these two little wings over there, which is going to give you a good crimp. So let's go ahead and crimp this one. This coolant temperature sensor is a forward feed connector. So what, what I did is inserted the wire into the rear of it already and stripped it. So we're going to go ahead and crimp it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull it back into the connector. This connector has to be assembled this way. The terminals will not go in from the back side. Let's start with a larger size. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to prevent the pin from rolling sideways in the connector. So as you can see here, we've got a pretty clean crimp. It's nice and even. We've got the copper strands that are the conductor of the wire and the primary crimp and the insulation on the secondary crimp, which is our strain relief. We're going to go ahead and pull this into the connector. So now that it's inserted into the connector, this one is done and we'll move on to this connector, which actually goes to the can box itself. Now this connector, the strain relief portion that we were talking about, we're only going to crimp it. A certain amount because if you over crimp the strain relief it'll allow you to insert the terminal too far into this connector so then you won't be able to latch this latch portion so let's make sure we've got a good crimp there Now we're just going to crimp this just a little bit. Now see how it's not completely tight to the wire there? What that's going to do is it's going to stop it from over inserting. So we're going to insert it through the seal in the back. And then when fully inserted, it's hard to see in the connector here. But it's probably about this level underneath the red retainer. Now when you push the red retainer down, we already have one pin inserted in here they're gonna come right up to the top. So see how both of them are flush with the top now? That's what you're looking for for final assembly.